Here we go. Hey, howdy. Good morning. Good to see you guys. Quick question. What do we do when we have this potential conflict between following the code and making sure that something works? Because we've had uh, in the last several months some battles going head to head between uh, EV and a GFI breaker and making sure we're following the code. Needs your input? It's going to be a good one. Stay tuned. So here's our scenario. We've got, uh, let's say we've, we've done an EV installation, right? And the newer code is, we've got that 1450, we've got a GFI breaker on it because it's in the garage for the EV charger. You plug in the EV and the homeowner calls and says, hey, your GFI breaker is tripping. And so um, go through all the normal stuff, right? All the low hanging fruit, is it the bad GFI breaker? Do we have uh, neutrals and grounds touching? Do we have a loose connection that's Making and breaking contact is going to cause that to uh, nuisance trip. At the end of the day, it's all good. The homeowner saying, hey, I take my car and I charge it at other places. No problem. And so here's where we're working with the code in terms of the code says, hey, if you've got a, in this case, a 1450 out in that garage, it has to be on a GFI breaker. That's the code. Okay. So now we're also looking at. I've got to talk to my homeowner and say, I know you just bought your $100,000 car, but you can't charge it here. And so that's the dilemma. And so I want to go back to the code on this and get your input, because ultimately we have to make a choice in terms of how we follow this, how we enforce the code. So I went back to Article 90.2b. Uh, we'll put that in the graphic, 90.2b. And it is, the subheading is adequacy. It says the code contains provisions that are considered necessary for safety, compliance therewith, and proper maintenance result in an installation that is essentially free from hazard. Now, this is interesting, but not necessarily efficient, convenient, or adequate for good service. So the code is saying, hey, we're trying to make this safe because there's hazards that arise out of using electricity. But we're not responsible for whether or not, uh, the way I'm reading this with our scenario, we're not responsible for whether or not it works. So here's the problem. That's the code. That's all those code panels that every three years sit down and rework our lives. However, as electricians, people are installing electrical wiring, we have to, we have some responsibility to make sure it works. So in those one out of a hundred where we've got this, for instance, this scenario, where we've got an EV plugged in and it's nuisance stripping two or three times a week, what do we do? How do we stay code compliant? How do we make sure that the homeowner's, uh, in this case, car works? What do we do? What would you do? And that's my question. Uh, so that's one scenario. And that's happened uh, in the last year, probably only three times out of all the installations we do like this, but it's a thing. Here's your second scenario that we have, and this is classic, uh, probably since the early 90s. You have a homeowner that has a second fridge. Let's say they're hunters, right? And they have all their extra meat out in that second fridge or freezer out in the garage. You get a phone call because their GFI tripped while they were gone for the weekend, and they lost hundreds and hundreds of dollars of deer meat. And this has happened over the years many times, not just with deer meat, all kinds of perishables are outside. And the homeowner at that point says, like, get rid of the gosh darn GFI. It's too expensive. Code clearly says convenience outlets uh, in the garage are supposed to be GFI protected. Back to the same thing. Code says, hey, we're all about safety, not convenience and not function. What do you do? Last scenario I'm going to leave with you, okay? Um, homeowner in a newish house, let's say less than five years old, arc faults. All over the place right on the breakers they have a beautiful bright yellow dyson vacuum cleaner it nuisance strips the arc fault breaker you go through you replace the breaker especially if it's a cutler hammer 
They had the massive recall still ongoing um, as far as the repercussions of that recall. But you check everything out and it turns out that you can plug in other appliances into that circuit, even other vacuum cleaners, different brand, not a problem. But here they have their beautiful yellow Dyson vacuum cleaner and they can't use it without tripping the breaker and they've got to run downstairs out into the garage, reset it. It might hold for a while. It'll trip again. You do the low hanging fruit. They don't like each other. Three scenarios that all sort of have this tension between the adequacy of the code to make things safe, but not functional. And the fact that your homeowner who just has stuff that they want to work, won't work with those safety devices. What do you do? What is your course of action? Um, interested to hear your, your, uh, your comments, your questions. Um, we've got to be code compliant, but stuff has to work. Look forward to it. Click like and subscribe and we'll be talking.